Order the regular meeting of the East Point City Council on Tuesday, October the 20th. Please rise for the invocation given by Councilman Phil Guistel and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear God, we thank you for all of the many blessings you have given us. We are grateful to live in a time where there are no limits to what we can achieve other than how deep we want to dream. We are grateful to live in a place where opportunities abound. We are grateful to have the freedoms and rights that so many others long for. We are most grateful to live in the city of East Point where we have shown that by working together, there is no challenge that can't be met nor obstacle that can't be hurdled. It is in your name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. <clears throat> Councilperson Gastella. Here. Councilperson Kleinfeld. Here. Councilperson LaForest. Here. Mayor Pixley. Here. With that, we'll move to the first hearing of the public. Does anyone wish to be heard at this time? Mr. Wodecki. Thank you, Mayor. I, I'll make this brief because, believe it or not, I've got another meeting to go to. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to publicly thank uh, Mr. Guastella for his service. Uh, as we all know, public service comes out to basically be a thankless job. But I want you to know that there are citizens out there who appreciate and appre appreciated the efforts that you made. And we wish you best wishes and enjoy your post-council life. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Greg. Does anyone else wish to be heard at this time? Does anyone else wish to be heard? Seeing none, the first hearing of the public is closed. Move on to approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of October the 6th, 2015. Uh, I'll motion to approve the minutes uh, from October 6th, 2015. Do we have support? Support. Please call the roll. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson LaForest? Yes. Councilperson Costella? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. We have no scheduled hearings, no unfinished business. We'll start with reports from administration, and tonight we'll start with our city manager, Mr. Steve Duchesne. Some council um, scheduling business. Uh, again, a reminder that the November 5th uh, will be the charter required report and receive of the report of the Board of Canvassers by the council. Uh, we have to, uh, that is a special meeting, so we've yet to select the time. And uh, we have, obviously it is a very short meeting uh, required by the charter. Um, obviously 6 p.m. is a uh, time for special meetings if council wishes because of the nature of the shortness of the meeting to hold it earlier and you're available. Uh, certainly that can be done too, so I need to kind of reach a consensus on that if we could. So we can schedule accordingly. Anybody? Five o'clock, six mm. o'clock? Uh, five o'clock is fine for me. Sure. Five, it's for you. Sure. Ron? Um, I'm thinking more like probably I'll try to do five o'clock. Okay. You want to change it to six? Uh, would you do six? Uh, would six be okay with you? Six oh, is fine. Whatever. Okay, yeah. okay. six o'clock on the okay. Okay. Then, of course, to note that uh, Monday, the November 9th meeting, will be for transition and the conclusion of the business of the uh, uh, 14 or the 13 15 council and the beginning of the business for the 15 17 council. Uh, that would be at 7 p.m. as usual. Um, my notes and comments tonight uh, regarding the Great Lakes Water Authority uh, we've done a lot of, held a lot of discussion, and you see the recommendation. If there's any other questions, I will certainly answer those tonight uh, for public purposes or otherwise. But um, that fundamentally is where a lot of work has come down to, and we see uh, no downside. And the only potential in this whole plan with the Great Lakes Water Authority is uh, by uh, transitioning to the new authority with different representation structure, at least. Um, and with that, uh, we do have one. Other item to schedule the annual financial report presentation and then the uh, report of the independent auditors. And we are looking again at uh, November 24th. That will be primarily for, uh, well, new council if there's 
if they're listening, they'll have to make plans accordingly, but that would get us in time so we can file the audit and the annual financial report with the state uh, as we've done in the past years. And that'll be taken up as item E. With that, Madam Mayor, that's all I have for my reports tonight. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Dushing? Any questions? Um, I had a uh, thought that I wanted to share with you um, just because I know there's been issues with um, trees when redoing roads. Um, do you think it might be possible in the future when we have contract modifications um, to kind of like add on or, or when we're doing streets to add on what the cost would be to replace the remaining trees if we're removing them? So maybe when sure. we decide to do a project, if we're mm -hmm. spending, you know, 600000 to redo an area or something and it costs an extra four to put the trees back, or, you know, or replant new trees, you know, Yes, an uh, option I'd like to look into in the future for when uh, going. Not a problem with that. We will have some trees available under a grant we've received um, that we'll be able to utilize now. The grant's been approved, and we have that for now. But we also want to get back to having the, the city nursery idea so we have some acceptable species available for rights-of-way trees in the future, too. So that's a good idea. We can put that into our uh, future planning. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to our finance director, Mr. Blum. Yes, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, tomorrow is October 21st. A note to the residents. Um, if you don't pay your water bill by the closed business tomorrow, it will be removed from the water accounts and placed on the December 1st taxes. So final call. Um, wanted to mention the auditors were here for a little over two weeks. Yesterday they left the building. Uh, spend the next couple weeks answering email questions, but as normal it went smoothly. And um, as previously mentioned, you're going to set a date for them to come in and uh, let you know how it went. But that's all I've got tonight. Any questions? All right, let's move on to our city attorney, Mr. Albert. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, just a couple of uh, follow-up uh, items from uh, last meeting. Uh, the first being uh, um, I had informed the council that uh, Ms. Van Heeren and I were going to be proceeding with uh, two administrative search warrants. Uh, those uh, search warrants were uh, signed by Judge Gerds, and uh, Ms. Van Heeren performed uh, those search, search warrants uh, on October 8th. And also, the council authorized uh, the city attorney's office to proceed with a collection suit involving 15223 Maplewood. Uh, that collection suit will be filed upon Ms. Van Heeren's uh, return next week. And that's all I have for this evening. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to new business. And the first item is the bid award for the new Department of Public Works Complex Security Camera System. We have a motion. Madam Mayor, I make a motion to approve the utilization of governmental bid and authorize the purchase of camera security system for the Department of Public Services Complex and Able Electronics out of St. Clair Shores, Michigan, in the amount of $45,937.12 in accordance with its October 1st 2015 proposal and authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents related to the purchase. Do we have support? Support. Is there a question? Spelling. Just a clarify. Spelling issue. Please call the roll. Councilperson LaForest? Yes. Councilperson Gastella? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Item B is the introduction in the first reading of ordinance number 1127 which amends Chapter 8 um, <coughs> related to animals by creating a new article. So can we have a motion for that? I'll motion to introduce and give first reading to the ordinance number 1127, which amends Chapter 8, Animals, by creating a new Article 1, Section 8-9H, violations, penalties, and schedule the ordinance for second reading and consideration for adoption at City Council's November 9th, 2015 regular meeting. Do we have support? Support. Madam Mayor. Yes, please. I just wanted to uh, make a small change under the uh, the new uh, section. It should read, uh, it, right now it reads a first of second. It should read a first or second offense. Just a small uh, typo. Anything else? Any questions related to it? Nope. Looks good to me. All right. Please call the roll. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson LaForest? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilperson Gastel? Yes. 
Item C is the adoption of resolution number 1800, which relates to the ballot language for notice of a special assessment rule by first class mail rather than certified mail. Uh, we have a motion. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to adopt resolution number 1800, which establish, establishes the ballot question language to provide notice of a special assessment rule by first class mail rather than certified mail. We support. have support. Mr. Duchesne, did you want to say anything about this at all? Uh, just the comment that again, this is a, it's a very costly item. It has probably changed over time since the original inception in the charter of the requirement, and uh, the assess special assessment role can run up to to uh, forty thousand dollars as we go through the process, and the additional the costs of certified mail versus a first class mail with all the other multiple publications that go on seems to be uh, very fiscally sound to make this change and recommend such to the voters to do so. All right. Anything other comment? Please call the roll. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson Costello? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Um, Councilperson LaForest? Yes. Item D is the adoption of resolution number 1801, which is the approval of the agreement to assign wholesale customer water service contract. Madam Mayor, I make a motion to adopt resolution number 1801, which approves the agreement to assign wholesale customer water service contract and authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents related to this agreement. We have support. Support. Any comments? Please call a roll. Councilperson LaForest? Yes. Councilperson Costello? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Item E. Um, is our item to schedule the presentation of the annual financial report and the report of the independent auditors and it's been suggested that we do it on the 24th so can we get a motion for that uh, I'll motion to schedule City Council's 2015 presentation of uh, the annual financial report and report of the independent auditors for November 24 2015 at 6:30 p.m. Can we have support support Please call the roll. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson Gisela? Yes. Councilperson LaForest? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. And our last item for tonight is um, the proclamation for the Halloween Trick or Treat Day, which is obviously on October the 31st. We do this every year um, because we want it identified what the times are. Um, so I'm going to read it into the record. It just says, whereas the children of East Point are entitled to the fun and festivity associated with the observation of the Halloween trick-or-treat custom that is going from door to door in their immediate neighborhoods displaying their costumes and requesting treats. And whereas with the increasing possibility of accidents is an ever-present threat, and whereas it would appear that parents generally favor the early evening hours for trick-or-treat outings since this period permits greater visibility and tends to limit participation to younger children for whom the ob observance was originally intended. So now therefore the mayor and city council of East Point do hereby proclaim that Halloween, Saturday, October the 31st, shall also be known as the trick or treat day in East Point. We further ask both children and their parents to cooperate in limiting the time of trick or treat activities to the period between 5.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. And we also ask that young children be accompanied by parents or other responsible adults. We further request that householders indicate their willingness to welcome the children by keeping their porch or exterior lights on and that youngsters call only at home so lighted. Finally, we encourage the cooperation of all citizens, young and old, in making this a happy and safe occasion for children. And that's our proclamation, and it's worked very well, so I think it's really curtailed a lot of problems that other communities have. So. Thank you, and we'll move on to payroll and bills. Madam Mayor, I'll make the motion to pay the bills in the amount of $1,815,641.24. Support. We will support it. Any questions on any items? Please call the roll. Councilperson Gastella? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson LaForest? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Move on to the second hearing of the public. Does anyone wish to be heard at this time? Mr. Jakubiak.
Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council, uh, Walter Kubiak, East Point resident. Um, about a week and a half ago, the city came and tore up my sewer and tore up the sewer across the street from me because both of them were failing and the street was collapsing a little bit. And I had a curb that was missing. So I figured they were going to, after that, they were going to just take the street up directly across <coughs> from my house and directly across from the other gentleman's house. Then uh, a few days after that, I see somebody surveying the intersection. So I said to the gentleman, what are you doing? And he says, well, we're surveying the intersection. And I said, why? He said, well, we're going to take up the intersection. I says, really? He says, yeah. And he says, the four sidewalks are going to at the corner. And you're probably going to lose some of your sidewalk to the west and to the south. He says, uh, federal government wants that slope taken up. He said, it wants it to be more flat. Okay. So I tore up my sidewalk, tore up my lawn, tore up my sprinkler system. And I can live with that. But within a year or two, the gas company is going to come down the street and do the same thing. Why couldn't that have been postponed until the gas company came through? Now, I'm going to have to go through that twice. I'd like somebody to address that, please. Thank you, sir. Does <coughs> it, anyone else wish to be heard? Please state your name. I'm Sandy Guastala from Spindler, Unspindler in East Point. Good evening. And Phil, the kids and I, and Aubrey too, just want you to know how very proud we are of you and all of your accomplishments during these past six and a half years. You have done a tremendous job as a councilman and mayor pro tem serving the people of East Point. We know from firsthand experience that you have put your heart and soul into every decision made to make our beautiful city of East Point a better place to live. We have the utmost respect for you, and as your granddaughter would say, we love you to the moon and back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to be heard at this time? Anyone else? Seeing none, the second hearing in the public is closed, and we'll start with mayor and council reports. We'll start with Mr. LaForest. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, had the opportunity to attend East Detroit High School's homecoming, um, marched in the parade as uh, well as uh, the mayor was there. Uh, it was a great time had by all. Um, don't forget to vote November 3rd. It, it, I believe the local election is the most important election because it's the election where you live. So please, get out, rock the vote. Happy Halloween to everyone. Please be safe. Little kids are going to be running around all over the place. And last but not least, Mr. Gastella. I know we have a one, maybe two meetings left Absolutely. with you, uh, but I just want to chime in and echo what everybody else has said. You know, when I first came on council almost four years ago, uh, in no this coming November, um, you've taken me in, you've shown me so much, you have taught me so much, the do's and the don'ts, the rights and the wrongs, um, and I have just come to appreciate your commitment and your dedication and your service that you have given to the city, uh, especially during the times of just uh, immense hardship that we were going through. I was thinking back uh, a little while ago and, you know, your, your humor, your jokes, your slap happy wit that you brought to the council table to where you made things, when things felt really, really heavy, you just had a certain way to make the situation a little bit lighter than it was. So um, thank you so much for everything that you've done for me and help to me for everything that you have done for council, uh, but more importantly, for everything that you've given to our residents. Thanks, Phil. You've been a great friend. Thank you, Ron. Thank you very much. Mr. Kleinfeld. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, like uh, Councilman LaForce said, um, happy Halloween to everyone, and remember to vote on November 3rd. And um, I do want to say I haven't served with you that long. Uh, but when I ever have questions, you've been uh, really open to, to helping me uh, learn the ropes here. And um, 
it's been an honor serving with you, and uh, I'm really sad to see you go. So. Thank you. Thanks very much, Martha. Well, you wanted to be last. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to have to say it's been a very interesting six years. We have sure come through some very, very difficult times together. And I think it was with your perseverance and your introspection into all of the problems that really helped us get through a lot of these really tough situations. And it's been great having you as a mayor pro tem in recent times. Um, it was always interesting to chair a meeting with you sitting on one side and Bill sitting on the other side and your quips to keep the humor through some of the most tense situations. And I've really always, always appreciated it. But more than that, I think that we have been so fortunate um, to have you sitting on the library commission and to giving the reports to the seniors. They have always looked forward to hearing that. And you've been such a phenomenal help to the people in the library. And your family. Love seeing your family. Your family has always been very, very supportive of you and everything that's happened within the city. So that's always good. I can't say really goodbye. No. But I'd like to acknowledge this in case I never get a chance to say a lot of goodbyes. But I know that you're ready to say goodbye to everyone, so go on. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, everybody, for the, the kind words. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, first, though, that I have to touch on is uh, the library has some interesting events coming up. Um, Circle Fri uh, Tuesday, November 10th on your calendar at 6 o'clock. Our good friend Fran Salvatore will be cooking up appetizers at the library. If you've never had the pleasure of uh, tasting some of her delicious treats, and she'll give you the recipes, and um, it's just a wonderful time. So that's uh, November 10th at 6 o'clock. Also, the, on Monday the 26th, Sandy Baker's hosting um, a trivia contest. It's a Halloween-themed trivia contest, 6.30, over at the library. And their book and media sale is taking place at the end of this month. Saturday, October 31st from 12.30 to 4.30, and then Monday and Tuesday, November 2nd and 3rd from uh, 2 to 7. And a reminder over at the Senior Center, the Halloween Boo Bingo, uh, that will take place on Friday, October the 30th at 1 o'clock. Uh, you can come in costume. It's just two bucks. They've got treats, beverages, and Halloween prizes. Well, as it said, this is the last real full meeting for me. We've got the two little ones coming up, so there's just a few things that I'd like to share um, at this meeting. Um, it's been a privilege to serve the City of East Point at the council table for the past six and a half years. This time has certainly seen its ups and downs, but I feel good that I leave the city in much better shape than when I arrived. It's been well documented how the City of East Point has rebounded from the brink of insolvency to the current solid financial footing that we enjoy today. It is important that we never forget where we were six, eight years ago, the challenges we faced, the sacrifices we made, and the effort it took to restore our city. A city that other cities around the state look at and say, how did they do that? We did it by making and executing some very tough decisions and choices. We did it by working together, council, administration, and residents. We did it by doing the right things for East Point, though often unpopular, and we did it without the help from the state who tied our hands and rejected our pleas at every turn. Mayor Pixley, you and I are the only one left at the table that was here when I came on board. One thing I learned to appreciate through the years was the makeup of my first council. In addition to Mayor Pixley, Veronica Kleinfeld, Bill Sweeney, and Red Wendy Richardson were at this table. What I didn't know then, but I certainly know now, is how special that group was. I have watched other cities throughout our area and how their councils worked, or didn't, and realized that the first council was unlike any other. There were no personal agendas. There was no partisan politics. There was unmatched transparency and openness. The best interest of East Point was all that mattered, and no one cared who got the credit for any idea that would help to preserve our city. Does that mean we always agreed on everything? <laughs> Heck no. We had major disagreements over things like which buildings to close, should we spend money to improve city buildings, and on authorities that were created. None of our disagreements were personal, and the expression reasonable people can disagree became our mantra. 
I hope and pray that the next seated council can approach the uniqueness of the one from six and a half years ago. There are many things that I am proud of that have taken place during my tenure. At the top of the list, of course, is how our city pulled together to keep us alive. Equally impressive to me is how we were able to maintain all of our essential services throughout our economic downturn. Police, fire, ambulance, trash pickup, recreation. We kept our library open. We kept our street lights on. We invested in infrastructure like roads and sewers. As a city, we have done so much and more with less resources. None of this would have been possible without the effort of our residents. They have stepped up to the plate when additional funding was needed, but not with an open checkbook. Some requests were turned down, but the most important ones were supported. Our residents have shown remarkable patience. For example, City Hall closed on Fridays. Our recreation and senior centers are now located north of 11 Mile Road, and they have adapted and slowly embraced these changes. Another thing I'm proud of is we are trying to do more things that the young people of East Point can enjoy, specifically the sledding hill at Spindler Park, or should I say the Sweeney sledding hill. It is very important to give kids activities to do, and this is something they can enjoy, and it really doesn't cost anything more than a sled, a saucer, or even a piece of cardboard to have a good time. There are so many people that I owe a debt of gratitude for their support, friendship, guidance, and love throughout these past six and a half years. Administration, Steve, Randy, Randy, Linda, Joyce, Lori, Kimmy, Monica, Heather, and everyone at City Hall who was always helpful to me. Steve, you have certainly been a welcome addition to the East Point family. I don't know if it would have been possible for us to achieve our fiscal stability without your caring and creativity. Far too often I've heard people say this about our administration. They don't live in East Point. They don't care about East Point. Well, I'm here to tell you that nothing could be further from the truth. Some of our employees live in the city and others don't, but I have not met one who doesn't care about the well-being of East Point. Director McNeilance, thank you for overseeing two of the best public services departments ever. We are so blessed to have the talented police and fire uh, people serving us in our community. And even though it was a difficult decision at the time, I think the um, ambulance people have done a tremendous job for us. Rich, it's been a pleasure having you at the table, making sure what we did was done properly and for all the exceptional work you have done for us. I served on a couple commissions. would like to thank my library commissioners, Mary, Dennis, Dave, and Kevin, and our director, Carol Sperling. It's been an honor to serve with such dedicated people. I also want to thank Mary Grant, who runs the senior activities. We worked closely together when there was a senior advisory board, and her dedication was unsurpassed. Thank you all very much. Christine, thanks for delivering my packet on a weekly basis. Can't forget her. She does a great job, and it's always there. My name was on the ballot for three elections, one primary before we voted to eliminate primaries to save the city money, and two general elections. I had tremendous help from friends and family during these times, whether it was delivering campaign literature door to door, helping at the polls on election night, or making phone calls on my behalf. Many people have helped me, and I will be forever grateful. Nell, Grandma Kay, Veronica and Randy, Bill and Peggy, Pete and Gail, Steve and Tina, Tony and Sue. Uh, hey. Walt and Paul, Sarah and all her friends, Bonnie, Butch and Jamie, Ashley and Ben, anyone I may have overlooked, and of course my wife Sandy. One of the highlights for me has been the nice people that I have met and the friends I have made along the way. You will never know how much it meant to hear a word of encouragement for the work that we were doing, especially after agonizing over a difficult decision. Many personal sacrifices are made when you are in public office. Usually those sacrifices involve giving up family time in order to do city business. I've had to miss family functions, arrive late for birthday parties, and even delay anniversary celebrations. This is only possible with a loving and understanding and supportive family, which I am truly blessed to have. 
I know it's not nearly enough, but I say thank you to my son Brian and his wife Jamie and our granddaughter Aubrey, my daughter Ashley and her husband Ben, and most especially to my wife Sandy, who has listened to resident complaints, waited patiently while we were shopping or at a restaurant or at church when residents had questions that had to be answered right away and whose encouragement has meant more to me than she will ever know. I leave the City of East Point Council table the same way I arrived, with my head up, my integrity intact, and knowing that each decision I made, I felt was in the best interest of all of our residents. I never took money for campaigns, I purposely avoided belonging to any organizations, and I never sought or received any endorsements from any city group. I am a believer that if you take nothing from everyone, you do not owe anybody anything. The only people I answered to were all of our residents, not just the ones who voted, sent emails or called, but all of our residents. So I say thank you, God bless you, and God bless the great city of East Point. And now that we're all crying. All right, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Support. Please call the roll. Councilperson Costello. Yes. Councilperson LaForest. Yes. Mayor Pixley. Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld. Yes.